Thank you, Maha. And thank you so, so much to everybody who was here. And most especially, thank you to Jennifer Kane, who who's came up with this idea. And we're so, so happy to, to partner with her. As Maha mentioned, I represent the 47th Assembly District. This includes the communities of Fontana, Colton, Grand Terrace, Rialto, San Bernardino, and the unincorporated communities of Bloomington and Muscoy. And I've got to tell you, it's such a pleasure to join all of you this evening. Again, I want to start by thanking Jennifer Kane from the Arts Connection for inviting us to partner for today's arts, grants, virtual resource and mentorship meeting. That's a mouthful. As you all know, art is not just a hobby, but it can serve as a way of healing and can be a therapeutic, therapeutic escape from everyday life. Art is crucial to not only education, but to human growth. Building trust-based relationships with our communities and creating the unity through art and music is what we need today. As someone once said, the world always seems brighter when you've made, when you've just made something that wasn't there before. And the truth is that's what all of you as artists do every day. I'm so proud of the various nonprofits in the 47th Assembly District that are dedicated to bringing arts to San Bernardino County. In 2021, art organizations in San Bernardino County received nine grants totaling over $216,000 from the California Arts Council. That is an increase of 24% over the grants that were received in 2020. That may be good news, but there's so much more work that needs to be done. We need to bring more of that, more of that funding here to, to our area. And before I, I will share that before being elected as the assembly member for the 47th district, I had plenty of experience working with nonprofits and preparing grant applications. I know how hard it is. Aside from working as an attorney in private practice, I also assisted families through legal aid by providing free legal services to those who couldn't afford proper representation. And that's how I found out how difficult it is for nonprofits and community organizations to thrive without sufficient funding. That it, it, and we get the funding through various resources, including grants. Grants are a crucial component to many in our community in order to help them further enhance art and social programs and services that they're already providing. The funding allows for the allocation of resources to be distributed to underserved communities and for those organizations to keep working to meet the region's needs. We want our community to benefit from the many funding opportunities that are available. And that's why we're providing tonight's virtual workshop. We want you to take advantage of the grants that are available to you. Now, as I, as I told you earlier, Jennifer Kane is just an amazing person. She is the executive director of Arts Connection. She's been an artist all her life and has been the executive director for four years. She currently works at the Gar Garcia Center also, another organization that has been the recipient of a number of grants. She also has helped other organizations get grants, including the Little Gallery. So we're really happy about this. And she's done so much for so many artists and so many art associations. And now she's bringing it all to you, to the community. Jennifer will cover some exciting information on how to successfully apply for the art grants offered through state and federal funds. She will talk about best practices on how to make your application stand out. And I also want you to know that in our office, we work to ensure that these opportunities are shared with our communities. I've assigned Daisy Artiaga from my office to be in charge of grant support. So feel free to reach out to her for any assistance you may need or any direction you may need. I will tell, I will share with you that in the last few months, we have shared, my office has shared various grant opportunities with our nonprofits and with our small businesses. If you haven't received these emails, it may be that we don't have your information. So I ask that you please be sure to sign up with my office. Now, whether we are sharing information or writing letters or write letters of recommendation or letters of support, my office is here to offer a hand for you 
as you continue to be champions in our region. I hope you all learn a lot tonight from this presentation, and I want you to know that I will continue to bring informative and re re useful resources that can help our communities thrive. And now for the star of today's show, I want to introduce you all to Jennifer Kane. I know you know, many of you already know her. Jennifer? Oh, I think that was one of the most uh, lovely introductions I've ever gotten. Thank you so much <laughs> for that and for being here. Um, to support um, this effort, to support the um, arts and cultural community that really makes San Bernardino an amazing place to live, work, create, play. Um, and you've done so much for all of the organizations in the district, as well as specifically where we are. And I can't say enough um, to say thank you for your support, um, also to help put this together tonight. So thank you for taking the time this evening to, to do that. and. Um, Everyone, I'm really looking forward to sharing with you um, a lot of these opportunities and to share a little bit more about what we do because we're here in the community as a resource as well and a resource to support specifically the arts and cultural community in the county, but we're based in the city of San Bernardino. We spend a lot of our time there uh, working with the school district in the city um, of San Bernardino as well. So thank you so much. Um, I'll, if, as, okay, if I'll just go ahead and get started. The um, one thing I would like to just a little housekeeping if um, you are able to see who's in the room but we don't know we don't have time to go do individual introductions so if each of you wouldn't mind putting your name the organization that you represent or work that you do and maybe the area um, so you know Colton we have San Bernardino here um, Inland Empire region uh, folks from the school district cool um, nice to see you here um, so yeah, so that we just know who's in the room because this is meant to be a networking um, opportunity as well. Um, and we'll get to some of the mentorship opportunities coming up uh, at the end as well. Um, Arts Connection is the county of San Bernardino's Arts Council. So we do serve and represent the entire county. Um, our main mission is actually to support organizations and artists to either find work or find funding and resource support. So we do both. We actually um, help organizations get grants. We do, um, we do direct granting for organizations, sometimes through re-granting opportunities. We also give grants to artists. We have a micro-grant project, a program that's open right now, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, we also hire artists for projects like teaching and after-school programs, um, for offering workshops to the community, and uh, so those are all opportunities to stay connected to our organization. Um, last year, we uh, paid over $100,000 to different artists for uh, projects countywide that were all grant funded um, and offered uh, $45,000 in awards and stipends to different artists throughout the year. We like to support emerging projects through our fiscal sponsorship program and provide free programs to the community and residents throughout the county. That's just a little bit about what we do. Um, uh, but the main point of today's session is to talk about arts grants or grants for the arts, um, which there are quite a few. So it was fun putting this together to uh, provide some resources for all of you. Um, we can go ahead and go to the next slide. Thanks so much. Okay, so there are um, three types generally of arts grants that exist. Um, I didn't get into the weeds on private foundation grants for this workshop because that would take a whole nother hour and a half or more. So basically, if, um, it's important to understand you've got local, city or county, so your regional granting opportunities, you have the state and you have federal. Um, within each of those categories, we'll start with federal, you have the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Um, the ones that are going to apply for the arts are specifically the Challenge America, the Arts Project Grants, and the Our Town programs. Um, the most, uh, we'll get into the timeline coming up, but the one that's going to apply to most of you all is going to be the Challenge America grant. Um, that's coming up in April, and it's actually what they call sort of the entry point for folks. It's the one that you've never gotten one, you've never applied for, it's the one you should start with. Um, and it's very, very um, relevant to the communities in San Bernardino. So I highly, highly recommend looking into that one. Uh, the California Arts Council is the state agency. They offer the most money for art. Um, and right now they have a record budget from the last decade. So a lot of money there for organizational relief 
impact projects. Um, Reentry through the arts and jumpstarts are working with um, systems impacted youth as well as um, incarcerated individuals and uh, those who have returned uh, to community life. Uh, cultural pathways is specifically for communities uh, for arts and culture organizations who serve communities of color. Um, that's an organizational uh, specifically unrestricted organizational development grant. And I highly recommend folks look into that one. It's only offered every other year. Uh, the California Humanities, um, every quarter they offer quick grants of $5,000 for projects that are related to arts and humanities. And um, that's every quarter coming up pretty quick here. And it does not require a match, which is pretty big for, um, for grants if you, if you follow grant making at all. The other local state agency is called the California Alliance for Traditional Arts. Um, if these are all new to you, don't worry. Um, we can share these slides out. I can send links to all of these um, organizations, per, like separate agency websites, but just get familiar with the different funding um, sources. Locally, in terms of city and county, um, each city may or may not have its own public arts commission. There are ones like in Rancho, the city of San Bernardino, Yucaipa, Redlands, they have their own cultural arts commissions or um, public agencies or departments. Ontario actually has its own department for arts and culture. Um, it's the only one in the um, San Bernardino County that has that. Um, there aren't very many that offer grants. However, city of San Bernardino used to, Rancho Cucamonga still does. Um, so this is something that's actually uh, kind of a big problem in San Bernardino. Specifically, we do not have public funding for the arts in our county. Um, LA County does offer arts grants to organizations and artists, but San Bernardino County currently does not. Um, small business grants often do apply to nonprofits, especially in the arts. So always be paying attention to what comes out from the county for small business relief, because you are technically a small business. Um, so you should be treated as such and supported as such. Um, so that's kind of a high level overview of the categories without getting into you know, the smaller foundation grants, which we could we can do if y'all are interested on another, another workshop. Um, we can go ahead and go to the next one. Um, as I'm talking through this tooth, if you have questions, feel free to write them in the chat. Um, if they're pertinent or I can dive deeper into something, I'll touch on it right away. And um, if you want to just save questions for the end, uh, we'll also leave room for that as well. Uh, I love seeing where you all work and who you work with. So uh, this is really awesome. Um, okay, so um, for individual artists, these are so the same categories. Um, locally in San Bernardino, Arts Connection has developed its own granting program for individual artists, which actually is currently open now through March 6th. So if you know of an artist, um, yes, I'll share with the, the information afterwards as well. So you can look it over. Um, so make sure that to share this information with individual artists, it's for 500 and $1,000 grants and we fund it entirely through sponsorships and donations. So it's not, it's not county money, it's not, well, actually some of it is through sponsorships, but um, it's not state funding. And it's basically folks giving 15, 20, 30, $40 and we keep pulling it into this fund and then we give it out once a year. The state programs, um, there are individual artist fellowships now that um, the California Arts Council does offer. The Center for Cultural Innovation is um, a really amazing organization that offers individual artist grants and quick grants on a monthly basis. So if you're not aware of those folks, uh, definitely keep track of them. Um, and we'll get into kind of the cycle of that, but they offer that every month, a $600 grant for professional development. If you need to hire someone to help you coach or help you learn grant writing, those are all um, eligible expenses for that $600 grant. Um, the, the NEA or the National Endowment for the Arts does actually offer creative, creative writing fellowships and translation projects. Oh, sorry, I think I forgot to finish that sentence there. Um, so that's new actually. Um, so if you're an artist and you're interested or you know an artist, make sure to share that resource out for them as well. Um, and I'll pause there to see if, are there any questions at the moment? I don't see any. Okay, so I wanted to give a 
uh, a quick overview of what's available before we kind of get into the specifics of, of some of them, right? Because each of them has different process. Um, you can go to the next slide. Thanks. Um, so, oh, sorry about that. That top one's kind of hard to read. Um, I will fix that. And the California Arts Council, that's what the line is on top. Their grant cycles are due in March. So that's the most pertinent one. So we'll be talking mostly about that um, because it's the most, um, I would call it the low hanging fruit. They right now have six grant programs open. Um, or, one's an organizational relief grant, which is actually just unrestricted funding for organizations, especially impacted by COVID um, up to $30,000, which is, is, is quite a bit of money and, and really supportive right now. So we'll get into kind of the application stuff for the California Arts Council. Uh, California Humanities offers quick grants on a, a quarterly basis. Um, so I, the next one that's open is uh, June. So I actually created this. So I think it's really helpful to have a timeline of when all of these different agencies open their grant programs and when they're due. So um, for instance, the NEA are listed Challenge America is due April. Arts Projects is due July. Um, when is the award made? It's due, awarded in October. When can the project actually begin? So the important thing to lay out here is um, when, do the, when are the opportunities available, right? Because someone comes to you and says, I've got this great project idea. Okay, that's awesome. But when could I actually get funding to do it? When is the application open versus when does it close? And then when do you think you might actually get the money? So a big, a big thing to know about state and federal funding is that you shouldn't plan a project for less than a year out for when you apply to when you're gonna get funded if you get that funding. So for instance, um, we applied for a grant last year in February for a project in San Bernardino, which got funded. The decisions are made in July. The grant contracts are sent in October, November, and then you wait for funding to come. I am still waiting for money that got approved in July to start a project that was supposed to start <laughs> in November. So this is just something to be aware of to not totally rely on grant funding to run projects and programs. Oftentimes, unless they're really flexible. Um, yeah, so it's diversify, 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 right? Grant funding can be great, but you can't rely on it if you're um, waiting for that funding and it comes six months late. So we'll share out this calendar because I thought, you know, this would be really useful. You can plug the dates into your own Google calendar or whatnot so that the things are on your radar. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about, well, the Cali Catalyst program is actually a really, um, uh, it's a new one from the Center for Cultural Innovation and it's specifically for communities of color and to support leaders in those communities. Um, and it's up to $5,000. Um, one of the community members that I supported in San Bernardino just got that to work on a um, community music space that they're gonna build out of Cobb, like a Cobb dome at the Garcia Center Garden. And so that funding is accessible, it's doable, um, and we wanna help you get it. Um, start, you can start with the smaller ones and work your way up to the bigger ones. Don't get, don't get overwhelmed, you can do it. Um, okay, so we can go on to the next slide. Um, okay, so a couple of examples of projects that were funded recently. Um, I worked with both of these organizations and um, one was more experienced than the other. That's okay. So for, in, for the example of Miltree, um, Miltree is an organization that creates arts and cultural programming specifically for veterans, um, active military and uh, those kind of, um, and their families and communities. Um, they, what's important about knowing about these projects is that you oftentimes have to have a defined community that you want to work with. So in the instance of military, they work with veterans and active military and those communities. So it's very easy for them to define what their projects are going to be and who they're going to support. Um, I work with a lot of folks who want to get grants for projects, but they aren't clear on who the audience is that they're trying to support. Um, so for instance, if you work with students, that's great, but you know, what, what age group 
uh, what are their particular, um, is it their socioeconomic issues that they're working with? The more detail that you can um, get and know about the community that you're working with, the easier it will be for you to write your grant as well as to find grants that are um, specific to your work. Um, and I'll get into why that's important later. Um, so with Miltree, they, um, there used to be a grant actually called Veterans in the Arts. So that made that pretty easy, right? We found a program that was specifically for working with veterans using the arts, kind of a shoe in um, It doesn't always make it that easy, but um, they, did, they spent over a year trying to work with their speakers. So listed their you know, experts that they were working with to develop a three-day retreat for the vets. Um, they had a, a psychotherapist, educator, and author. They had a professional percussionist. They had um, a, myth a mythologist or a writer who's also a veteran. And then they had a professional creative writing coach. They actually co-created the program together before they even thought about applying for this grant. So they had all the information together. They had the bios. And basically they just needed to craft this narrative about what they wanted to do and why, um, which they'd already kind of been working on together. So things get funded when they're authentic, when the work's already kind of been put together by the folks who are most passionate about it. Um, and not just, um, oh, I've got this great idea and I, you spend 25 minutes on it before you submit it. Um, I've read a lot of grants where you can tell the difference um, so putting the work in ahead of time, laying that groundwork is really, really important. Um, for the little gallery, they um, had, they're based in the city of San Bernardino downtown and they took over um, a vacant space and created a community gallery um, in uh, the breezeway. And they've been showcasing local artists and trying to um, create a space for conversation about how important the arts is in the community, as well as the amazing art that's being made in San Bernardino. Um, but they also wanted to make the connection between how important the arts are and bringing um, and lifting up local businesses. So what their project was is they saw a need for connecting art with local businesses and they decided to create a connection project. So it's um, putting out a call for local photographers and then matching the local photographers work in businesses that would like to host the art. Um, then they were gonna create an interactive map for folks to be able to go visit each of the businesses where the art would be hung. And that way they could learn about the businesses, they could support the businesses, but they could also learn about some of the artists who love the city and wanna reflect their, their love of the city through their photography. Um, and so that's, that's the project that they recently got funded through the Impact Project Grant with the California Arts Council. Um, Okay, so those are a couple of examples um, and just sort of thinking through how they approached what, what their project idea was and then kind of finding a grant that would work for it rather than other, the other way around. Does that make sense? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so um, if it's hard to read, the title there is Eligibility and Things to Prepare. So oftentimes um, we don't know, am I eligible for this grant or what should I have ready? Um, here, we made a little checklist. Um, one of the most important things is to understand that um, not everybody can apply just because you create art. You do have to have an association with an organization um, that is a nonprofit or is fiscally sponsored. Um, I could talk more about that if folks are interested towards the end. Um, local governments can apply as long as it's through an arts related department. Um, you do have to have a history of arts related programming for at least two years and be based in California. That's not the case for federal grants, right? So anybody across the nation can apply for federal grants, but ones for, that are state specific, you can't have a business address in, Cal in Colorado, even if you do programming in California. Um, actually, that's not entirely true. I take that back. Um, as long as you have two years of programming in California, I think your physical address can be somewhere else. Um, documentation of your work is super important. Even if you haven't started applying and you're building your resume for it, um, having good photos, um, having a strong timeline of the work that you've done and 
in related to your work and your mission is going to go a long way to helping you craft written narratives about what your work has done and the impact of it. Um, even if you're small and you don't have much of an operating budget, it's important to document even the things that are volunteer or donated because your operating budget includes everything that's even donations. So if you can track what those were, the number of hours that you've put in, you may think that you only have revenue of $10,000, but if your director has volunteered 20 hours a week for the whole year, you can actually list her volunteer hours as um, an in-kind cost that would be reflected in your organizational budget. So these are all things to um, make a little note of that as like, okay, maybe I need to learn more about what that means. Don't be overwhelmed by it because it, it overwhelmed me when I first heard that like four years ago. I was like, what does that mean? Um, just make a little note. I need to learn more about what that, that looks like for my organization. Um, yeah, keep track of who your leadership is, even if it's volunteers. Um, you can you know, have bios and pictures of them. Oftentimes that's required, at least the bios. Um, a clear mission, vision, and history of the organization. For the uh, California Arts Council right now, they are part of their organizational profile does require, re require a racial equity statement. That's um, not new this year, but it's um, new last year. And um, it's important to address that within your organization's uh, culture. How do you talk about racial and cultural equity? How do you actually address it in your work? That's what they're looking for in the statement is an understanding of the historic inequities that your community that you serve um, faces. And then the things that your organization is committed to actively doing to address those inequities and the systems of oppression that have created them. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a strategic plan for how to do that. It does have to be something that you could share publicly that, um, the, organiz that the, the panelists will review that as a part of your application. Um, it's not always required letters of support or testimonials, but it's always good to have them in case that they are. Um, and that can be people you work with um, or have been impacted by your programming. It can be um, supervisors, it can be legislators sort of depends on the level of the application. Um, a DUNS number is required for federal grants. And um, if you haven't already registered, I highly recommend just looking into the very complicated uh, system of SAM.gov, which is where you would go to register um, yourself for federal grants. But mostly that would be the NEA and the NEH. Go ahead and start preparing your organizational profile on the CIC website, which is the California Arts Council, and um, then keep folders of all of all of those grant applications. Um, so that's a lot, and most of you probably have all of this already um, in the work that you do. Um, it's just keeping it keeping it kind of all in um, those folders that we like to get. They get all messy on your computer, but go through and keep them all organized. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Awesome. So yeah, I was like, well, that can be a long list, but what should you do to get started today? Um, I would say that other than, well, first of all, getting those profiles set up, that would be the first thing that I would do. Um, but I would like for you each to review all of the grant opportunities that we talked about today in terms of what their intention is, like wh why, they, um, why they created that grant program, and then pick one, maybe two, that suits your particular work. Um, and the reason that a lot of people just like think they have to apply for these things just for the sake of applying. But honestly, a lot of people waste their time because it doesn't actually match your mission. And um, the, you know, grant writing is a lot of work and it takes like a lot of you know, staff time to do this. So I think that doing your research and making sure that is the right opportunity for you at the right time is very, very, very important. Um, so put those grant deadlines on your calendar, create links to them, you know, directly in the calendar. Like where does, where do I go to set up the profile? Where do I do all this? Add a checklist for yourself 
and make sure to start at least six weeks in advance of when the application is due. I'm saying at least six. It can be done. You can procrastinate and do it much more quickly, but you know how that goes, right? You, um, you don't want it to be last minute. And the person that you've agreed to enlist as your helper is not going to be happy with you. Um, so I highly, highly suggest that you enlist someone to help you, but that you agree on an accountability system for getting things done on time, because I've worked with some folks who were they were moving along and then they waited till three days before it was due. And then they sent me a draft and said, can you look at this? And, you know, me being maybe a little bit too nice said, okay, I'll take a look at it. And, you know, my heart sinks because it's like this, this is, this isn't going anywhere. You know, it would take me two days to fix this or to add what's needed. And so you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing um, a disservice to the person who's agreed to help you. Um, yeah, and so part of this was also connecting with each of you and connecting you with the resources that exist or that you need um, to feel like confident enough to approach some of this stuff. Um, and we can go to the last slide. I think it's the last one, maybe it's not. Um, all right, so we're gonna send you links to each of the granting agencies. Um, to those particular grant programs that um, we talked about. And I want you to just look at the details. Does it resonate with your work? Um, in each of their websites, they also archive webinars and grant resources. They have FAQs. They also list past applicants who have been successful. They list what they funded in the past. It is so helpful for me in applying for something to for the first time to look at what have they funded in the past? What has been a successful application? What is eligible for this funding? Um, as an example, they used to have a professional or an organizational development grant, grant from the state and it was for $5,000. And I thought, well, well, that's pretty broad organizational development. What does that mean? As I looked at what past applicants had applied for and I said, oh my gosh, they applied to have their website updated. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> You know, so you can get ideas and inspiration for things that you didn't even think you could apply for. Um, so I think that really helps. Um, I've also emailed program officers directly and their information is always listed on those agency websites. So I highly recommend that you email them. You har don't harass them, but you follow up repeatedly until you get an answer that serves you, right? Because oftentimes they can be very vague um, and see if you can just get their phone number. If they're being vague in email, just say, can I call you? Because sometimes they don't list their phone number publicly. Don't be that person who doesn't ask for help and really get the answer to make sure that you're addressing the answer correctly or that you're providing the best possible support material um, to make your organization really stand out. Um, if you've never written a grant before, I do highly recommend you take a workshop on it. Um, or if you find a mentor who can work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Academy Go is local. They do a really great grant writing academy. Um, the Grantsmanship Center, which is based out of Los Angeles, is also really, really good. Um, they're, that's who I took my workshop with, and it completely changed my life and my writing, so I highly recommend them. One thing that actually helps is the $600 that you can get through the Center for Cultural Innovation, which is the CCI grant there. You can apply that $600 for the fees for these grant writing workshops. Um, so again, get a grant to help you with another thing to get other grants, but it's okay. That's, that's why this professional development funding exists. Um, if you aren't currently a nonprofit, you can apply for fiscal sponsorship. There are a few organizations that do that locally there's one national that's called uh, Fractured Atlas that I didn't list, but um, locally Arts Connection, that's us, the arts area and uh, Fulcrum Arts are all local uh, fiscal sponsorship organizations for arts related programming. Um, I have been 
asked to fiscally sponsor a, a campaign to save a plot of land um, in Redlands, but it didn't quite align with our mission, so we couldn't do that. But there are some interesting requests for that. So, um, you know, we're doing this workshop today because we wanted to offer grant writing support to all of you to partnering organizations. Um, and we do that for our partner agencies. Um, so I'll let you know, I can share information about that program. And then, um, yeah, the last, one of the last things we wanted to do was open up the floor for organizations to share where they're at in their journey um, and what kind of support or mentorship they would need um, to move forward because we'd like to get you connected with another arts leader or arts organization in the region who has applied for some of these, who's been successful, that we can then connect you with and they can be your one-on-one, -on -one. they can be your buddy. They can, you know, if you give them enough time, maybe read through stuff. Um, Cause that's the goal, right? I feel like you're more likely to step into a new space when you have the support. And when you have um, someone who's your, you know, in your corner saying, you can do this. I was in your shoes two years ago and now, you know, I know you can do it. Um, so that's, yeah, I love seeing people um, just, yeah, change their lives around um, feeling successful to, to really advocate for their organization and, and grow and, and get that grant money, bring it home. So I'm gonna pause there because my, I realize that my throat's really dry and I've probably been talking too much. So um, I'd like to, uh, to see if anyone has any questions or um, how we can hop into sharing where you all are at in your grant writing journeys. Anybody thinking of applying for any of these particular programs? I uh, see from Michelle in the chat, Michelle Williams. Um, what organization are you with? Michelle, the art of living, art of living loved. Yes, the art of living loved uh, LLC. That's my um, business. So I would like more information. This has been great. This existed. So um, definitely would like information on the grants as well as you know the websites and mentorship this is a new road <laughs> and tell me more about uh -huh. what your what does your organization um do that's arts related well we provide creative expressive workshops um using art um, the powerful tool of therapeutic art as a catalyst for healing mm -hmm. so we have several different topic i mean lots of topics lots of workshops to offer and the best thing about minds is i will is that there's no art experience necessary. So mm -hmm. less is better. So um, kind of using, instead of brushes, we're using like makeup sponges, Q-tips, mm -hmm. right? Using acrylic paint. So we don't get stuck in our head and what manifests is what helps the participants mm -hmm. to kind of learn and, you know, say things that they haven't been able to find words for through I the think art. I think that's so important. Um, there aren't enough people doing that work. So thank you so much. No, thank um, you. That's amazing. Um, just to, to clarify one thing though, is your is yours um, LLC? So it's established as a business, correct? Correct. Okay. So um, one thing about grants is if you're established as a business, you can't apply for nonprofit grants. Okay. Um, but there are some exceptions. Um, and I could talk to you about some of what those are. So like if you've established as an LLC, but you don't make money at it, right? So some people do that for liability reasons. They establish their project as an LLC to keep their personal liability separate. Right. But you, you know, say you, your books are like, well, I actually don't make money doing this because the goal is not to make money, but it's just to pay people. Um, there are some exceptions to finding a fiscal sponsor to apply for, for arts grants. Um, yeah, if, if that's the case for you. So we could, you know, if you'd like to, we could talk um, yeah. separately about the ins and outs of that. That um, would be awesome. Did your business start um, after July 1st, 2019? I started it... August of um, 2021. Oh, 
<laughs> so we didn't get into this, but there's a new state program called the California Dream Fund uh, grants. And that is for new businesses that has started after July 1st, 2019 that are mission driven. Um, and I'm, I didn't get into it today because I'm not an expert and there are, there's a webinar next week. Um, nice. And um, Maha, do you have any information about some of the webinars for that program that's coming up? I, I do not, but I can get the information and send it out to everyone who's registered at this meeting today. Okay, amazing. Because um, Michelle, I think that would actually be perfect for you. And those oh. are $10,000 grants. Wow. Um, and I, if anybody else, if you, it's also available to nonprofits. And um, so if you kind of, if you fit that category in which you, you're a relatively new business, or if you're thinking of starting one, um, you can apply for these grants. You have to go through like a 12 week or is it 12 hour or 12 week? I forget. It's a training program that you have to go through and mm -hmm. then they help you apply to the state for these particular grants. And it's through the office of small business assistance. So it's not through any of the arts agencies specifically, but this is where, you know, we get into talking about how sometimes we limit ourselves thinking about, we have to just apply for arts grants, but yeah. if we're, you, you're a small business, right. Or you're a, um, a service provider, right? right. So those are other ways to think about, you know, ways to fund your work or find connections with the school district to provide service um to different school districts so that's another way that we've been able to fund some of our work is to become a service provider for school districts awesome oh so, I like that, that oh yeah anyway those are the different things I was like oh I should have added that in there but I knew it was going to come up in the questions so um uh let's see are there any age restrictions on applications as individual artists um for the micro grant program that we offer there are no age restrictions um there i believe for the state arts grants i do believe there is an age restriction but for the ones we offer there's not um i'm gonna go ahead and put a link to that one directly in the chat because the application is closing really soon and uh last year we did fund um we funded one student at least i'm hoping we'll do more this year did anyone else have any other questions or Um, Jennifer, I have a question. Um, yeah. What do you think makes an individual stand out? What have you seen has been successful in this, especially in the San Bernardino County area for the grants? Um, individuals or like uh, organizations? I guess both. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a great question. When I've served on grant panels, the most impressive ones are very clear. And I know that sounds very simple, but the clearer that you can be about what you want to do and why, it is remarkably hard to do in a grant application. And I, I just don't know. I don't know why it's that hard, but when someone asks you, you know, to describe your project in 10 different ways and how you're going to do it, it somehow gets confusing to be able for, for some folks on how to do that. So if you can clearly define who you're serving, what you want to do and why I, I mean hands down and you can clearly articulate that you, I, I don't think there's any grant you wouldn't get um the the clarity with brevity though is because oftentimes the grant applications limit your character counts or word counts uh that's that's where you have to get creative right so write your first draft edit it down, write your second draft, edit it down, and then have someone read it. And then you start to really distill what you're actually trying to say. And you're picking those words, like just the perfect word to describe what you wanted to do. Um, and then really being clear with your samples that you provide in terms of, of pictures, or um, you know, if they require letters of support, it's the quality of, of the time that you put into putting the materials together and how connected they are to what you're asking the money four, it's really, really important that it's all connected. Um, so I'd say that the best applications that I've ever read are the ones where they are very specific and very clear and they don't try to talk around what they wanna do. 
Oh, and then they ha use punctuation. <laughs> I know that's very simple, but like using good like punctuation. <laughs> this is why having someone read your stuff ahead of time is very important. Yeah. Anyone else um, specifically? I saw some folks from um, different foundations, organizations from the school district, individual artists. Um, uh, developing white papers. Hmm. Um, a white paper on what specifically, Darren? Um, I'm not, I'm not an expert, nor do I know very much about developing a white paper. So I might not be that helpful with that question. Um, what is a, a silly project proposal? Um, I think you, I need, that needs to be more specific a project proposal. Um, I think as long as it meets, so a silly project is relative, right? So let's just say it's meant to serve children. Um, I think a silly project idea is actually great. Um, so it depends on, I need to know more about what the project actually is and does it meet the, the grant goals? Do you know what I mean? Sorry, I don't know that I'm able to answer that question without more information. Oh, um, I'm not sure purpose and intentional impact of our work. Um, you know what, I, that's a really great question, Darren, but I'm, I don't know that I could answer that tonight. So what I'm going to do actually is for everybody, I'm going to put my email in the chat and I'm going to put that out there. Um, there seems to be to look to me if that works. Uh, Jackson, I don't think that that's a silly project proposal, but again, it has to be specific. Like, who are the artists that you want to serve? Um, where are you, where do you propose that they meet? How often are you going to do it? How is it going to be organized? And what's like the impact that you intend to um, see out of that work? Um, I don't think any idea is silly. I think it's all based on what we see as a need in our community. And then we seek a way to solve it or to offer something. I think art is an offering for a need that we all have for connection, for um, expression. And it, it comes in different forms, right? If, if it's a gathering place for people, that's a form of art. If it's a painting, that's a form of art. And these, these things are all very, very important. Um, it's just how you figure out how to talk about it and how you present it. And that's the art of grant writing, right? Is you take your idea and you mold it into something that can be understood by someone who has no idea what you're trying to do. Um, that in and of itself is an art form, which is what I've learned over the last few years is how do I take my ability to write creatively to be a little bit more technical uh, and merge the two. Um, and uh, that's why I'm excited to be able to meet more of you to learn more about what you wanna do. So I'd say start by emailing me if you'd like to learn more or find another mentor or work with me. Um, and uh, we, can, we can get you connected. That's what we do. The Arts Connection is, is help you build and help you grow. So um, I think I'm gonna pause there um, because, oh, I see one more question. One more question. Um, Beverly, reach out to me and we'll have a, we'll have a conversation, okay? I think it's a great question. Um, don't worry about not having experience. Yep. All right. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna close us this evening, um, and just offer my uh, gratitude again for you all to take the time to do this, um, to invest in yourselves, to grow, to learn a new thing. It's not easy, especially during COVID, to continue to push yourself into new experiences and try new things. So. Thank you. Um, thank you for the time. And uh, again, I am I'm always available. I love talking about this stuff and I'm seriously a nerd about grants. So please reach out and uh, 
Um, Eloise, thank you so much for hosting this on behalf of the community so that I could meet everybody. This has been absolutely amazing, Jennifer. I, uh, I can hardly wait to, to hear the comments. Um, I've seen the, the, the comments in the chat room and um, everybody is so grateful. I, I'm grateful to you because this is being recorded. We will put it on our website. We will share it with others because some of you may have taken screenshots because you want to make sure you don't lose some of these, especially when you're going through the list of things to prepare. You've, you've given so much information. So I thank you. I thank you for that. Um, when we have experts like Jennifer, we have to take advantage of that. Uh, and the fact that she has been so generous with her time and willing to share the knowledge that she has and her experience is invaluable. Uh, Jennifer, I'm ever so grateful to you uh, on behalf of my office and on behalf of the community because you have now opened doors and I hope many of you who were thinking, oh, never, never mind, I don't want to apply for a grant. Now you know you can do it and now you know there is someone who is willing to assist you and maybe, maybe to be your mentor and if not, then maybe direct you to another mentor. Um, this is just been unbelievable. I want to thank all of you who have um, who have been here. That's right, Carla. Applause here, right? <laughs> I want to thank all of you for for joining us tonight. Um, this has been good for me. I've seen lots of presentations for nonprofits. This is the first time I've seen one specifically in the arts, and there was so much to learn here. Um, as I said at the very beginning, if you're not getting our emails about grant opportunities, I, I just don't have your information. Maha will be gathering it and hopefully you will now be on our mailing list and we will share opportunities that do come up. Again, Jennifer, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for, for doing this um, and for providing all of this invaluable information to our community. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful evening and keep bringing your art to us. We love it. I may not have that skill, but my son does. And I'm ever so grateful that he does. I don't know where he got it from, but I'm grateful to him that he has it. And I'm grateful to all of you who have your skill and you're willing to share it with the community. Jennifer, again, thank you're you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. I hope you all have a wonderful evening and uh, please be in touch. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.